So, hi guys! Ngayong June 20, 2020 ay i-analyze natin ang financials. So, kung makikita nyo, I mean, bago tayo pumunta doon, check muna natin yung performance ng iba pang indices. So, lahat naman sila is actually down year to date. Ang pinaka biggest loser is actually mining and oil down 38.42% at next yung financials which is down 32.90%. So, ang pinakamababang down or lugi year to date is actually services which is down 8.88%. So, now let's move on sa composition ng financials. So, eto actually yung financials. Kung makikita nyo, composition niya is banks. So, nandyan yung BDO, BPI, China Bank, East West, Metro Bank, PNB, RCB, Security Bank, and Union Bank. So, kung makikita nyo, year to date is actually lahat sila ay down. Ang pinaka worst perform Uh, worst ang performance is Security Bank down 47.54%. So, possibly because na, I mean, na, naging yung MSCI din ang grade sila at na, nasama na lang, na lang sila sa small cups. So, yun yung nag-trigger sa uh, price nila na medyo bumaba. <laughs> But anyway, check natin pala yung valuations ng banks based on the price earnings ratio relative to other indices. So, kung price earnings ratio naman is actually banks is the cheapest. Kasi 8.27 times lang yung price earnings ratio. Yung price earnings ratio is actually yung piso na earnings ng isang financials ay nagbabayad ka ng 8.27 times. So, so, syempre, kung mas mababa is mas okay siya kasi medyo mas mura. But then again, it's also a subjective one. Hindi dahil sa mura siya is, of course, kailangan mo siyang bilhin at hindi dahil mahal ay kailangan mo siyang ibenta. Kasi, yeah, tingnan mo din kasi yung history and um, others that could also affect your decision. And another interpretation ng price earnings ratio is that ito yung number of years na marerecover mo yung pinambili mo based on earnings. So, it's actually 8.27 years. So, syempre kung mas mababa is mas maganda. Now, let's move on sa valuations na gagamitin natin. Actually, ang gagamitin natin is price to book value. So, ano naman to? Um, book value first is ito yung makukuha ng common stockholders kapag nagsara yung isang kumpanya. Of course, assuming na ma-realize nila yung mga assets nila based on the declared amount and of course, mabayaran lahat ng pinagkakautangan kasama yung preferred shareholders. At yung natira is yun yung mapupunta sa common stockholders. Last, actually, last priority. Pero syempre, kung mag-grow naman kasi yung company, sila yung um, magbe-benefit the most. So, yung price book to book value, ito yung the market price over the book value. So, kung 1 is to 1 is same lang sila ng market price. So, normally, it's okay na ganon. And anything na below 1 na price to book value is um, subjectively mura. And of course, yung medyo mas mataas sa uh, or greater than 1 is medyo mahal. Pero kung meron kang sets of data, katulad nito, financials, syempre ang gagamitin natin na Reference is, of course, the average. So, anything na, so, kung meron yung 0.64, like, for example, this security bank is, ibig sabihin ay, okay lang siya. So, anything na below 0.64 is actually attractive or mura. And, of course, anything above 0.64 is, of course, mahal. So, this is, so, 
yung mahal is actually BDO 1.20 times at saka BPI na 1.20 times din. So, same lang pala sila. At yung mura is actually Union Bank 0.63 times. Next, si China Bank 0.57 at saka si Metro Bank 0.57. Next is yung RCB 0.40 times. East West na 0.36 at ang pinakamura based on price to book value is 0.22 which is si PNB. So, si PNB pala, sabi ko nga, naalala ko kasi ito eh. Si PNB at saka si East West yung pinakamura. Eh. So, syempre kung sila yung mura, mas malaki yung kanilang possible upside. So, ganun siya gamitin. So, ngayon, check natin. Actually, yeah, bago natin pala i-check is, actually, banks, I have no banks. Kasi, in a crisis, sila yung pinaka-greatly affected. Pangalawa is, actually, kasama na dun dun. Kasama din, na din dun yung kanilang possible earnings when it comes to crisis kasi sila talaga yung um, syempre last priority ng mga tao and of course ng mga businesses so so yun, kaya ayaw ko siya and next is when the rise of the digital currencies, so yun so nawawalan siya ng share when it comes to financial transactions kasi syempre mas gusto na nila yung um, more cashless or sila na mismo yung bank. They, they, are the, they are the bank. So, be the bank na. So, I, I think that will be the future. Well, in my opinion only, ha? Kasi mostly, I, kung makikita nyo my portfolio ko, it's actually, I'm more on digital currencies. Like, for example, Bitcoin and the rest, cryptocurrencies. So, on a positive note naman is supportive naman yung ating central banks. So, yeah. I think that's it. Check na lang natin yung um, possible targets for all of this. So, sa lahat sila. So, check lang natin. So, puntan lang natin yung chart. So, loading lang siya. So, next is... Hmm, medyo matagal lang siya. So, FINA. Check pa ba natin to? So, check na lang din natin. <laughs> Ang kulit ko lang. So, kita nyo naman. Um, Kikinash yung ginagamit natin. I wait. Let's load. Kasi wala ata itong ano. Wala siyang indicator. So, ito na lang gamitin natin. Pero, bawasan natin yung indicator. Kahit isa lang yung gamitin natin. So, tanggalin natin yung um, Bollinger Band, EMA. Tanggalin na din natin. Pati pivots. Tanggalin natin. Pero, iwanan natin, of course, yung at least one. So, yung RSI na lang. So, puntahan natin si Fina. Or financials. So, kung makikita nyo, it's... Hmm. Ay, na-discuss ko na ba yung... Merong daw anomaly regarding sa 2.1 billion dollars. So, sabi nila. I don't know if... Yeah. I think nabasa nyo naman na yun. Or I think na-forward ko sa Investagram groups. Group. So, this might possibly, of course, affect the financial next week. So, yeah, I think possibly i-retest niya. I'm more bearish. Actually, I'm more medium to long term. I mean, medium, short term to medium term. Actually, sabi ko nga, wala naman akong bank. So, alam nyo na. So, I mean, alam nyo na na I'm more bearish or hold. So, ito yung tinitignan ko na possible support ng financials 
zero four. So, kung mag-breakdown siya dyan, possibly dito sa 1,157. And of course, possible resistance is, eto muna, yung image it. Kailangan mag-break out siya dyan sa 1, 1,274. And of course, eto. So, yan yung mga tinitignan kong uh, 1,366.46. Yan yung tinitignan ko sa financials. So, kung makikita nyo naman, hmm, check natin kung merong ano. So, convergence lang naman siya. Pero sa tingin ko, is, ang bias ko dito is actually more on a downside. So, posibleng i-retest 1, 2, 2, 1 na support. So, same actually with the Hikinashi. So, more bearish pa yung kanyang candle. So, yeah, let's see. So, puntahan na lang natin yung composition ng financial. So, unahin natin yung, ano, yung medyo mahal na si BDO at saka si BPI. So, si BDO BDO So, loading. So, gamitin muna natin yung candles. So, tignan nyo naman. Actually, malakas yung selling pressure from the candle alone. Kasi, nag, um, actually, it's grave it's actually a doji. Grave. Gravestone doji. I think. Yeah. So, ibig sabihin, actually, doji is neutral. Pero, depende kung nasaan yung pressure. Para sa akin nga, sometimes kasi, it's already signaling a possible reversal or a possible continuation of the current trend. So, me medyo bearish ako dito. Ah. So, possibly, of course, retest around 98 and next doon, ay, this is actually the support one. And our next possible support is, wait, let's check. So, possibly, of course, dito, sa level na to. At, 95. And of course, worst case is dito. I mean, not the worst case kung mag breakdown pa siya dyan is nasa 86 level. Worst case, of course, the 52 week low. So, yan yung medyo bearish talaga ako kasi tatlong, tatlong support. Anyways, um, possible resistance na immediate resistance is of course the 103 or around 104 pesos. And of course the, this one, around 113. So, ito yung mga tinitignan ko na possible support and resistance. Pero sabi ko nga, wala akong banks. Kasi tingin ko in the future, ang mga tao na yung magiging banks. Be your own bank. Ganun ako eh. Ang kulit lang eh. Anyway, so check natin yung ano, yung possible risk reward. Gamitin muna natin, of course, yung first. Kaso medyo bearish ako dito eh. I mean, wala naman pala akong holdings, but yeah, bearish talaga ako dito. Bearish or hold. Hold to bearish ako sa mga banks. So, yeah, so it depends sa strategy ninyo, but, yeah, of course, I, I don't know kasi yung strategy nyo, kasi ako more on position trader ako. So, syempre, tinitignan ko yung future ng isang company kung papasukin ko ba siya. Kasi kung, um, normally is, of course, the valuation comes kapag merong future earnings. Kasi syempre, aakyat yung valuations. Pero kung yung future niya is 
not so bright or ibig sabihin pasara na yung company or nalulugi na yung company ay nako um alam niyo na anyways so yung possible kung first support at saka first resistance lang ang gagamitin natin is actually the risk reward ratio is well it's 3.52 pero yung possible mong kitain is 3.52% at of course possible kang malugi ng 1%. Kung yung second support at saka second resistance so posible kang kumita ng 13.49% kung mahit yung target at posible ka namang malugi ng 4.18% kung mahit yung um yung stop loss. And of course, kung gagamitin natin yung 86, the resistance 2 and the support 3, actually pwede kang malugi ng 13.32% at posible ka namang kumita ng 13.49%. So, ganun lang siya. For BDO. But sabi ko nga, yeah, I have no banks at the moment. Yeah, siguro kung makita ko na within the next few quarters, medyo nagre-recover na yung economy. And of course, syempre, yung kanilang kita, eh, might possibly pumasok ako sa bank. But at the moment, yeah, hindi ko pa nakikita kasi yun eh. In my opinion ha, of course. So, next is BPI. So, BPI. So, BPI. So, tingnan mo yung candle niya is more on downward pressure. Hindi ah, pala natin nakita yung RSI ng ano kanina. No? Video. But anyway. So, ano ba yung trend? It's... Hmm, yan yun naman yun. Actually, uptrend naman siya. Pero kasi yung candle niya is going bearish. So, posibleng i-retest tong area na to. That is um, that's actually around 64. Pero may, meron pa siyang su support level dito. At this level, that's actually around 68. Pero, yeah, I think this is the strong support na I'm looking at. And, of course, check natin yung nasa resistance level niya. So, yan. And, of course, tinitingnan natin resistance is this level. First support and first resistance lang to ha. So, yan. At 78. So, kapag nag-breakdown pa siya dyan, sa support na yan is, of course, this area. At around 60 pesos. So, I think yan, yan muna yung yung support and resistance na kukunin natin. And, of course, yung second resistance is dito. Actually, may gap siya dun. Ah. Before the gap. But, I think mas better if it fills the gap. Kasi, you, normally, nafe-fill naman yung gap. So, let's use that as a resistance. So, that's actually around 84. So, makita nyo, ang bias ko dito is actually bearish. Based sa candle pa lang is dito, hindi na kasi siya nag, hindi niya na, wait, check natin, yung high, 73.95, this is 73.85. So, dun pa lang is nahirapan na siya. So, yun. 
And of course, tignan mo pa baba din yung kanyang indicator. So, convergence lang sila actually. So, check natin yung possible risk reward. So, gamitin muna natin yung first support and of course, first resistance. So, possible risk reward ratio is 0.69. Ako kasi pumapasok ako if the risk reward ratio is at least 2. But then again, sabi ko nga, I'm more on position trader ako. So, this one is, kung mahit yung target natin na resistance 1 na 78, posible tayong kumita ng 7.48% at posible naman tayong malugi ng 10.77% kung mahit yung ating stop loss na around 65 so, kung yung second resistance naman at saka yung second support, that's actually a risk reward ratio of 0.92. Hindi pa rin siya pasado sa, sa, sa at least sa standard ko na to. Uh, but anyway, pwede kang kung mahit yung possible target natin at saka stop loss, posible ka namang kumita ng 15.31% at posible kang malugi ng 16.60% kung mahit yung stop loss na natin na 60 pesos. So, there you go for BPI. So, next naman ay yung China Bank. Ah, hindi. Check muna natin yung ano. Yung, check muna natin yung pinakamahal and ilas natin yung pinakamura. So, check natin si Security Bank muna. Sec B. So, Security Bank. So, checking. Nagko-consolidate siya actually at this level. But actually, ang bias ko dito is more bearish. So, possible support na sinitingnan ko is this area at 100 pesos. At around 100 pesos. So, yeah, let's see. Bearish ako eh. Actually, wala, sabi ko nga, wala naman akong banks eh. And of course, possible next support is 93 pesos. So, yan yung mga tinitignan natin sa security bank. And of course, yung worst case is of course dito na. Sa around, worst case na yun ha, kung bumaba, bumagsak pa siya, around 77 pesos. And of course, yung possible resistance natin, Immediate is, of course, this area. 105. So, kapag nag-breakout siya dyan, is, of course, this area. So, anyways, di ko kasi alam kung anong klaseng trader kayo eh. Um, kasi minsan for stock, yeah, may mga kumikita na scalping, kaso, kaso kasi hindi kasi ako... Yeah, sabi ko nga, hindi online yung gamit ko na platform. So, isa pa yun. And, yeah, hindi rin kasi ako masyadong focus sa Philippine stocks. So, nagpumasok lang ako actually nung nag-crash yung market. Kasi, syempre, kapag nag-crash is mura na siya. Yung iba nag-out nun. But then again, syempre, kung there's actually an opportunity naman lagi in trading. So, just look for that opportunity and focus ka sa, I mean, focus ka sa, ay, focus ka lang kung saan ka mas, mas kumikita. Like, for example, ako kasi more on sa crypto. So, syempre, dun ako mas focus. do may stocks din ako, which is, yeah, actually performing good naman, better than the index. So, actually, I'm happy na din. So, kahit hindi ko siya masyadong nababantayan. Kasi ang tinignan ko naman dun is the possible future earnings or the valuations. So, usually kasi yung isang company, kapag 
yung growth level, I mean, yung growth phase ng business cycle, that's actually the biggest biggest ROI na pwede mong makuha. Kasi kapag nag-peak na siya, of course, hindi na siya ganun, um, hindi na ganun kalaki yung posible mong kitain. So, ganun lang yan. In my opinion, of course. Anyways, for security bank, kung yung gagamitin natin yung first support and first resistance, possible risk reward ratio is 0.61. And, oh, what did I use? No, I think I use short. Wait, that should not be short. Kasi kailangan long position. Wala pa na, wala kasing short sa stock market. I mean, sa Philippine stock market. Kasi sa ibang market, meron short. You can, pwede ka kasing kumita kahit anong side ng market sa iba. Like, for example, ako, trinitrade ko yung mga global indices like Nasdaq. Favorite ko yung Nasdaq kasi more on technology. So, yeah. Yung security bank, possible risk reward is 1.71. And kung mahit yung target natin, yung first resistance na around 105, posibleng kumita ng 3.35% at posibleng malugi ng 1.96% kapag na-hit yung stop loss level natin. And of course, kung gagamitin natin yung second resistance and of course, yung second support, that's actually a risk-reward ratio of 1.35 which is, hindi pa rin siya, wait, based on my standard is hindi pa rin siya pumasa. However, kung nag kung yan kung trained niyo siya at or meron kayo nito at this level, posible kang kumita ng 12 point I mean, what's that? 11.98% at posibleng malugi ng 8.91%. Kung mahit yung take profit natin na around 115 at mas top out ka naman ng Uh, 93 pesos. So, yan. So, I think yun na lang muna for security bank. Yung second support at saka second resistance. So, after ng security bank, what's the next bank? Is Union Bank. Uy, nag-drop siya. Ito pala yung malaking drop. Wala, nakita ko lang sa price Union Bank of the Philippines. Mali pala. Yung na-type natin. What? What happened? So, di ko alam eh kung anong nangyari sa security bank. I mean security bank. It's already at Union Bank pala. So, kung makita mo naman, wait, check natin yung longer term. What happened? Hmm. So, actually, on this note, mala ang lakas ng selling pressure eh. So, for me, of course, I'm more bearish. Wait, check natin yung volume pala. Di, na, di pala naka-on yung volume natin. Medyo malakas eh. More than the average din. So, I don't know what happened to this. Wait, let's check the PSEH. Check natin lang yung kung may update. So, kung may update, just go on the PSEH. Kasi nandun na lahat naman ng information. So, check lang natin. Baka kasi may namiss tayo na information. Pero sa lakas ng selling pressure is possibly pa yun na masundan. So, wala naman. Wala namang ano eh. Actually, wala namang disclosure. Pero kung makikita mo kasi is, wait, add natin yung net foreign. Kasi may net foreign na 12 million eh. So, might possibly that's the reason kung bakit siya nagkaroon ng or bumaba. So, medyo yun. Yun nga. 
So, makikita nyo guys is medyo malakas yung foreign. So, nagbenta sila kaya siya bumagsak ng ganyan. So, yun. Ang nangyari kay security ba? I mean, security ba? Union Bank. Sorry, sorry. So, actually, possibly din siya na double bottom kung mag-recover siya dyan. But then again, ako, more on, more on bearish ako eh. Ay, weekly pala to na. So, yeah, let's see. Yung daily. Possible double bottom actually. But then again, sabi ko nga, wala na, I'm not looking into banks at the moment. So, yes, so siguro yun din yung isang reason kung bakit nag-sell off yung mga foreign. I, well, I don't know ah. So, possibly lang. So, yeah, tignan natin. But for me, possible support na tinitignan ko is, wala, medyo ano dyan eh. Possible support is at this level at 44 area. Pero mas malakas tong area na to at this level. Oh. At around 38. Yun yung pinakamalakas na support na tinitingnan ko. Based on TA, ya, kasi on the banks itself, sabi ko nga, I'm not into banks. Ayoko lang ng banks. Anyway, kung sakaling mga resistance, lakas ng selling pressure, pambira. So, resistance na tinitingnan natin is, of course, the immediate resistance. Is at least mag-recover muna siya dito. At 54. So, actually, yung opening niya. Kasi ang lakas eh. So, and of course, the next key... Ay, red pala ito kasi it's a resistance. So, yun. And, of course, the next key possible resistance is, of course, the 58 area. So, ang gagawin natin next is, of course, let's measure the... Kahit, of course, yung RSI is... Yun. pababa din. So, yeah. Pero kung mag-hold siya dyan, it's actually a, a bullish divergence. Kung mag-hold siya dyan. So, check natin yung kanyang possible risk reward. So, gamitin natin, of course, yung first support and first resistance. So, ang first, I mean, ang possible risk-reward ratio is 1.14. Hmm, hindi siya po masa sa akin. I mean, sa, sa standard ko. Um, sa standard ko sa stocks, ha, kasi, syempre, more on position trader ka. So, I mean, ako pala. So, yeah, possible target of 11.17% kung mahit yung target natin around 54 or 55 and of course, posibleng malugi ng 9.83% kung mas top out ka sa around 44. So, kung, mera, kung mahit naman yung ating second resistance at second support, possibly kumita ng 17.72% kung mahit yung TP natin na around 58 at kung mas top out tayo sa around 38, posible tayong malugi ng 21.28%. Pero kung hindi na siya umabot doon, gamitin natin yung first support at saka second resistance, posibleng kumita, same pa rin, 17.72% kung mahit yung 58 target profit natin. And of course, kung mas top out naman at 44 pesos, posibleng malugi ng 9.01%. So that's actually a risk reward ratio of 1.97%. So, now let's move on to after Union Bank is China Bank and Metro Bank.
China Bank, China Bank phrase before Metro Bank. So, ito naman, China Bank. So, makikita nyo, it's actually a bearish candle. So, syempre, ang ano ko dito, ang bias ko is, of course, bearish or pababa. So, ang tinitingnan kong support is around 19 pesos. So, kung mag-breakdown pa siya dyan is, of course, possible next support at around 18 pesos. So, possible resistance, of course, this area which is around 20 pesos or 20 or around 21 na siya. And of course, yung next doon is, wait, check natin, this area at around 22.88. So, medyo, ano, medyo close, close pala siya. So, gamitin na lang natin yung mga point something niya. So, ito syempre ang bias ko is actually bearish based on the candle itself. So, check natin and it's actually net foreign selling also. Wait, I'm just checking kung meron. So, now let's measure the ano the risk-reward. So, kung sakaling pumosisyon ka, of course, kung pumosisyon ka, is of course, gamitin mag-weight ka sa support area. Ipala natin nagawa yun ano, sa ibang ano, stocks. But anyway, so, Kung makapasok ka sa support area na around 19.76 at yung TP natin around 20.91 and 18.81 yung stop loss natin, posible kang pumita ng 5.71% at posibleng maluke ng 4.90%. Actually, that's a risk-reward ratio of 1.16. So, gamitin naman natin yung this one, the second resistance. So, kung yung second resistance naman, kung sakaling mahit yan, take profit natin around 22.88, posibleng kumita ng 15.62%, and of course, posible pa rin malugi ng 4.90%, kung mas stop out tayo sa around 18.81. So, yun yung kay Metro I mean, Metro Bank. I mean, kay China Bank. Next is Metro Bank. So, more on bearish din ako dyan. But then again, sabi ko, I, do, I don't have banks. At, yeah, actually, ito yung last sector or, actually, wala akong planong pumasok sa banks. <laughs> siguro, siguro, busy lang kasi ako sa kakatrade sa crypto. Or, yeah, I think the crypto, it's actually the future money. Actually, napag-uusapan na din siya sa ano yan. Sa, ano ba yan? Sa, sa Asian. Nung last time na Asian Development Bank na nakapag-attend ako. Yun. It's actually the Central Bank Digital Currency. So, this one naman, Metro Bank. Actually, nas, nagko-consolidate lang siya. So, more on. Wait, check natin yung Hiken Ashi. So, actually, more on bearish pa rin. Kasi, Pababa pa din siya. So, yun. More on bearish pa rin ako dito. So, unless na lang is medyo mag. So, ang tinitingnan ko actually support around this level at 34. So, actually yan na yun eh. 34 to, 34 to actually the 52 week low na 32.90. So, yun yung tinitingnan ko na, of course, support and of course, resistance at around 43 area. So, actually, ang dami pala niyang gap, gap down. No? Meron siya dito. I mean, isa pala. Pero na-feel na kasi ito eh, dito sa area na to So, yun. 
Um, actually, yun lang masasabi ko kay Metro Bank. Grabe, ang laki din na. Um, well, ah, sorry, hindi ako makapag-isip sa banks. Eh. But, on a TA-wise, yun. Gamitin lang natin tong first support and first resistance. Yan, hindi kasi ako ganun ka-bullish sa banks. Eh. So, yeah, but anyway, sab sabi ko nga, it, it, it also depends on how you look at it. Kasi on price earnings ratio naman, makikita nyo naman as what I've um, pinakita ko kanina is, it's actually the cheapest. Based on, um, versus the other indices. Hindi lang ako makabanks at the moment. And I think in the future then. <laughs> <laughs> Ang kulit ko lang. Anyway, kung ma-hit yung target uh, profit natin at around 43 area, posibleng kumita ng 11.55% at kung ma-stop out naman at around posibleng malugi ng 11.84% kung ma-hit yung 34 area na cut loss area. So, yun lang ang masasabi ko sa Metro Bank. Next is, so, point 0.57, next is RCB. So, malapit na. So, RCB. So, yung RCB naman, oh, isa pa to. Bearish din. <laughs> Pagkita pa lang ng candle, bearish agad eh. Ang kulit ko lang, ano. Actually, bearish. Of course, bearish ako dyan. So, possible support is at this level. Immediate support is 16.28. At, of course, eto na. Yung 52-week low. This is actually around 14 pesos. So, pwede natin palitan actually dito. Around 14. So, yan yung tinitignan ko na, of course, support. Ang kulit ko lang ano. So resistance naman. <laughs> Ang kulit naman eh. So resistance. Ah, uh, chaka lang titingnan mo yung volume niya. I mean, volume itself, eh. medyo ano siya eh. Nakita ah, yung volume. Hindi siya ganon. Actually hindi siya ganon ka liquid for me ah. I don't know how you define liquidity kasi medyo subjective din yung mga bagay na yan. So, yun. Yung tinitignan nating possible support and resistance. So, resistance at 20.62 pesos. So, kung um, check natin yung risk-reward ratio neto. Kung pumasok tayo at around this area sa support. But, yeah, sabi ko nga, I'm not, I'm not into banks talaga. So, kung ano naman, kung sakali mang meron kayo nito, um, at nakapasok kayo at around 16.28, ang possible risk-reward ninyo, or posibli kayong kumita ng 26.23% kung mahit yung take profit natin target na 20.55. And of course, posibleng maluke ng 14.25% kung mahit naman yung stop out or stop price na 14 pesos. So, yun yung kay RCP. So, next is tapos na siya. So, East West. And finally, PNB. So, yun na. Malapit na. konti na lang. Si East West na. So, East West and of course, PNB. So, East West. So, wow, East West. So, since ito, itong banks na to is the, isa sa mga cheapest, um, second to the last cheapest. Pero kung makikita nyo, ano siya, ha? Medyo nasa resistance siya, eh, pero makikita nyo, medyo malakas naman yung buying area niya. So, most likely, 
I'm more on bullish. Possibly retest this area at around 9.19 pesos. Pero for me, hindi siya ganun kalakas kasi na resistance eh. Yan. Most likely, ang tinitignan kong resistance at least this area at around 10 pesos. Or actually, medyo mas okay pa nga dito sa area na to eh. Around 11 pesos. Kasi meron din siya palang gaps doon. So, yeah. Most likely, mas ano ko tong resistance na yan. At around 10.92 pesos or around 11 pesos to fill the gap. So, yun. Kaso meron din pala siyang, mukha siyang may gap din dito. Wait, let's check. High is 778, ay 779, and the high is, I mean the low is 779, 783. So medyo may gap din pala siya dyan. So, pero malakas kasi yung buying pressure. Oh. Lakas. So possible support around 7.26. And, of course, yung, yeah, kung mag-breakdown pa siya dyan, is, of course, this area. Around the 52-week low na 6.08. Or 6, yeah, basta at, at that level. So, check natin yung possible risk reward. Kung sakali man. Na, kunwari, nagamit natin to first resistance and, of course, first support. So, actually, that's a risk-reward ratio of 1.03 at posibleng kumita ng 12.09% kung mahit yung take profit na 9.18. Kung mas stop out naman is posibleng malugi ng 11.72% kung mas stop out sa 7.23 pesos. And, of course, gamitin natin yung... Gamitin pa rin natin yan and the second resistance na around 10.90 pesos. So, kung yan, is posibleng kumita ng around 33.09% kung mahit yung take profit na 10.90 and of course, posibleng maluge ng 12.33% kung mas stop out sa around 7.18 pesos. And of course, kung gagamitin natin tong second support and Second resistance, target is, syempre, yun pa rin, 33.09% kung, kung mahit yung TP area na 10.90 pesos. And, of course, kung mas top out ka naman is posibleng maluke ng 25.03%. Kung mas top out sa 6.14 pesos. So, yun, ang kay is west. So, next is, of course, yung last, PNB. So, let's see. Ito yung pinaka-cheapest based on sa price to book value. Oh. Laki pala ng, ang laki pala ng down nito. So, kung tignan mo yung trend, oh. Down trend. So, check natin yung ano niya. Checking the trend. Or, eto na lang. Wait, hindi dito. Kasi medyo ano siya eh. So, yeah. Let's see. Kaya pa ba dun? Kasi parang hindi na siya ano eh. O, oh, pwede pa rin naman. So, kung makikita nyo, Hmm, long-term downtrend. I mean, yeah, 2019. So, medyo medium term na downtrend. So, yeah, for me, yeah, let's look at the chart. I mean, medyo nagko-consolidate siya eh. So, tignan natin kung mag-hold siya dyan. Dalawa kasi nga eh. Dalawang candle. So, nahirapan siya na mag-move higher. So, wait. Let's check the high. 21.50. At yung high, 21.50 din. So, on that note, 
I'm more actually bearish, so posibleng i-retest itong area na to. Around, wait, let's check. Around this area na 19.42 pesos. Or actually this, this blue na nasa middle ng parallel line. Parallel something. Ano bang ginamit natin kanina? Parallel channel. So, yun. Yung nasa gitna na line. So, actually, dun din. Around 19.42. And, of course, kung magtuloy-tuloy pa siya dyan is, of course, the 18.29 or the 52-week low. Of course, yung resistance na tinitignan natin is at 23.29. 93. So, I think yun muna. 4 PNB. Kasi nasa ano din siya eh. Nasa downtrend channel siya. Kasi for me, kung nasa downtrend channel siya, antayin ko siya na, I mean, pwede ko siyang i-trade within the channel. Or, syempre, mas magandang when sa stocks kasi, I mean, yeah, depende pala sa strategy ninyo. Is, of course, kung mag-reverse siya dito sa downtrend channel na to. But then again, sabi ko nga, I'm not into banks. So, kung sakali man na wait. Kasi after nyan is, this is the next possible resistance I'm looking at. So, it plot na din natin. So, kung first support at saka first resistance, ang gagamitin natin is possible risk reward or posibleng kitain ay actually kumahit of course yung target natin na around 23.93 at yung first support na mas stop out tayo at 19.14 is of course posible tayong maluge ng 8.90% at posibleng kumita ng 13.66% sa prices na mga yun. And of course, kung gamitin natin yung second resistance at 30.39 pesos, posibleng kumita ng 44.65% kung mahit yung TP na or take profit na 30.39 at of course, posibleng maluge ng 8.90% pa rin. Kasi yun yung ginamit pa rin natin is yung first support. And of course, kung sa second support naman siya or mag-breakdown pa siya at yung take profit na price ay na-hit at 30.39, posibleng kumita pa rin ng 44.65%. And of course, posibleng malugi ng 13.18%. Kung mahit yung cut loss area natin na 18.29. So yeah, I think that's it for the financials. So kung may questions kay guys, just feel free to message me sa mga social medias in this video. And of course, you can also email me at uh, my email in this video. And yeah, of course, mahalagang paalala in trading and investing, laging may kasamang risk. So please trade at your own risk, guys. Thanks, guys.